Um, another film that I have seen recently um, is uh, Michael Apted's 28 Up. 28 Up is, a ser is the fourth of a series of uh, British documentaries made from the 60s, I think, up to present day. And what they are is, is one of my favorite um, documentary series um, of films. It, uh, it, oh, it started with seven, the film called 7 Up. And the premise of 7 Up was, it came out in 63, I think, or just the early 60s. And the premise of it was they got 14 British children from, um, from around um, different social classes and different parts of England. And they brought them all together and asked them a couple of questions about what, what their perceptions were of the world, what their perceptions of uh, what they think they wanted to do when they grew up what they think um, of family, of relationships, of friends, what do they think, um, what do they do in their free time? All of these things were kind of asked, what do they think of girls or boys, depending on the gender? Um, and they were kind of asked all these questions um, and they uh, were set off to just live their own lives. This is Seven Up and seven years later, there was another film called 14 Up where they followed the same uh, 14 children I think it was 14, and then they um, followed the children and revisited them and, s and tried to see where their lives kind of um, ended up at 14 years old. It's very f interesting for me personally because I have a, I'm very interested in generational um, difference, differences in perceptions of the world, and um, for this generation, you can really tell a lot of what they were kind of anticipating from seven years old obviously they were um to some extent they were kind of up in the clouds and swords and they had no real kind of grasp of um the socialized um structures of that kind of govern um our daily lives by the, by 14 years old they all from different backgrounds they've all kind of become more closed off to the grandeur um ideals that they had back when they were seven but they still have some kind of level some semblance of optimism though they feel though though they um appear more close off because of the perhaps because they're coming around the age of puberty and all of this but what is very fascinating for me is just you know there is a very strong sense in which what the well the, the film what the filmmakers are trying to kind of their thesis statement of sorts is that um your how you are is completely how you are when you grow up is completely determined by um where you're from and your social status they kind of use the mantra the jesuit mantra that i'll uh, give us the child by the age of seven and we will make you the man or something like that so the idea that when you're by the age of seven those characteristics that, that you kind of show um is like the, the essence of you that's you who you are and as you progress through life it's just kind of variations on this very you know um, strict essence and they also kind of um, have their different theories I think on public school versus private school um, inner city versus city, uh, in, uh, you know city versus um, more provincial areas uh, so they, and, they, and they kind of follow these the, the, the tracks of these children uh, and when I got to 20 well right now I'm at, I, tw seeing 21 up was very moving for me because it would definitely was around the time of where I am right now and just um, hearing a lot of their um a lot of their muted um, aspirations really sort of accord with me. And a lot of the people I do know, even in this generation, even though we are kind of like 40 years apart, there is a sense when you're around college age that you, like your aspirations get kind of, sh kind of shrink to some extent because you um, are perhaps more aware of how the world is structured and how the society, how the things that you want uh, or the difficulty in acquiring the things that you kind of want in life. Um, and the biggest difference from 21 to 28 for these different people was the aspect of um, relationships. A lot of them, when they were 21, they were very much um, in the belief that they did not want to kind of engage in romance at that point, or at least they they had no sense in which they were going to become parents. Um, it was very far away in, their, in the back of their heads, and they thought that, you know, some of them had the possibility in their heads that they'll never have become parents. And when you go to 28, um, you know, more than half of them have families of at least two or three kids. Um, 
and this is perhaps um, indicative maybe of the generation uh, 28 up came out in 84 so late 70s early 80s perhaps they were uh, having children earlier I think right now in our gen my generation of sorts in the generation above me the Millennials uh, I think the age of um, childbearing has increased I think because of a greater focus on um, career um, but um, it's very interesting to just see how the differences in perception of how you think you're going to be in seven years or where you think you're going to go is so widely different from how it eventually actually happens. Especially when you kind of, at the age of where I am, there's a sense in which you feel like you have a purpose, you have a direction, you have, uh, you, or you, at least you try to kind of create something like that. But most of the time, at least for this small sample size of people, um, none of um, very very few of what they you know projected onto their futures actually uh, became you know actually came true. Many some of them even moved from entire continents from the last time they were there, and some of them um, you know they look so different. This is one of this one of this this woman in the, in twenty one up. She was very kind of closed off and depressed looking and like chain smoking and um, clearly not wanting to be a part of the documentary. Um, saying that she never wants to have kids and she uh, sounded very nihilistic and all this and when you kind of get 28 up she, she she's so brightened up she's so she's smiling all the time she has a husband and two kids um and she seems like she is just loving her life so you know let's just i think it's very interesting this this series of films it goes all the way up to i think 63 up 63 50 um six up came out recently and 63 up comes out next year i think but it is just so fascinating how wrong we often are and how, we're, how we kind of perceive our futures and how much of this will change generationally and how um, the kinds of careers that people are kind of trying to find meaning in or different from how they might be doing it now. There's actually another series of films um, called like, Seven Up New Generation that starts with the, um, with the Millennium with 2000 that I'm definitely want, I definitely want to kind of watch and just maybe parse out differences and see how things may have changed or are the, are, are, are the same because giving you this kind of this kind of you know um long um uh study of human beings it's about human beings in general and just watching it i think is i highly recommend it because it gives you a better sense of perspective on the nature of you know time and moving through it and just the varying ways in which things can go and and various um various uh, stresses that one may feel at a certain point are completely gone by in seven years and they're replaced by new things and new things and it never seems like um never seems like what momentarily feels like an overwhelming amount of um stress um doesn't it doesn't seem like it actually pro you know, progresses forward there is one um, guy over here towards the end so the second to the last one um, guy who who we see who is kind of homeless and he's kind of um, uh, you know moving from place to place kind of lost because he feels so alienated by by um, society and I'm definitely kind of wondering what happens to him the next you know the next um, in 35 up I have no idea I haven't I don't want to kind of spoil anything but you know I think this series is one of the most important um, documentaries of all time and needs to be seen by everyone i feel like when i was watching it, it felt like um a a time capsule of human beings for like an alien or like a foreign species to watch and like study um hundreds and hundreds of years from now that's how important i think this is it feels, it's very, it feels very anthropological although there are issues in terms of the leading questions but you know it's definitely worth a watch and i um, highly recommend it just to give yourself like a better perspective on things.